He's white, he's devious, he's well educated, and he gets sick satisfaction from killing and maiming people. For 17 years, America has been terrorised by the man known as the Unabomber. His trademark is his handmade bombs, beautifully crafted and designed to kill horribly. For years, whole squads of special agents have been trying to track down this urban terrorist. They still have no idea who he is, but at least now they know why he's doing it. He wants to stop the march of technology. Because they're a symbol of modern life, he might blow up one of these planes at any time. Because they teach science and technology, universities are at risk. The Unabomber has targeted modern America and all who travel its superhighways. He's willing, happy even, to kill and injure innocent people. Anyone who loves what he doesn't. Technology. I lifted up the top of the box. Zap! Threw my arm off to the side. Uh, really splayed it open quite a lot. So I uh, basically blew a large divot out of my arm, ripped my hand open, blew off my fingers and everything. John Hauser was a pilot with the US Air Force and earmarked by NASA to become a space shuttle astronaut. But back in 1985, while doing postgraduate studies at the University of California, John Hauser's dreams disintegrated in one horrible flash. And the first thought in my mind was, why did they do that? Why did they do that? It just didn't make any sense. There was a chunk of the pipe from the pipe bomb that was like this long and, and this narrow that had drilled its way through my arm and almost down to my elbow. It left a little hole going through there. But my arm was just full of all kinds of things. Pieces of pipe, pieces of plastic, pieces of wire, all, all these sorts of things. It blew off the ends of my fingers with such force that it took my Air Force Academy ring, shot it about five feet into the wall, leaving the, where you could read the words Academy directly off of the wall. A serial murderer or a serial rapist or a serial type of criminal will continue his trade until he's caught. He just can't stop. And I think the Unabomber will continue. So that's Lou Bertram was an FBI special agent for over 20 years. At this point, the Unabomber is probably the most wanted federal fugitive in the United States at this time. The Unabomber. The FBI coined the name from his initial targets, universities and airlines. In his 17-year campaign of terror, his bombs have become bigger, his targets more varied, and his victims now number three dead and 23 injured. Until earlier this year, no one really knew his agenda. But it's now become clear what he wants. He wants to turn off the computer age. And he's not alone in his thinking. Well, as the New Yorker recently said, there is a little Unabomber in all of us. And I think that's true. And I think that's what this, uh, this revulsion against technology is showing. Author Kirkpatrick Sale, like the Unabomber, is proud to be a Luddite, someone who resists technological progress. Uh, th th there are millions of people who feel, as I do, that this technology is threatening us with catastrophe. Is that essentially the message of the Unabomber? The Unabomber... Uh, stands shoulder to shoulder with me, uh, I with him, on this particular issue, yes. So you think he probably came in the way we are? Right, he came this direction. This would be the most uh, quietest direction for him to come, down the alleyway, into the back of the computer store. In 16 bombing attacks, authorities have only ever once come close to identifying the Unabomber. Salt Lake City, 1987, the car park of a computer store place it on the ground, and as he came up, again, he had high, he developed eye contact with our witness. And the, the, the two women were behind that window? That's correct. They're searching for a man in his late 20s or early 30s with blondish curly hair. The blast maimed computer store owner, Gary Wright. But it provided the FBI with a breakthrough. America's most wanted man had at last been seen. 
With these sketches, investigators thought the net was closing. But again, they were to be frustrated. With the amount of leads that we got, the information, uh, the, uh, the motives that we were able to develop, uh, we turned the corner and hit a brick wall. Back then, what the FBI had were the fragments of a dozen bombs. But they still didn't know what the bomber was trying to prove. It took another eight years for the Unabomber to finally reveal his hand. Well, he goes on for uh, 16 years and he sees that uh, nobody thinks anything about this except that some nut is uh, loose. And he says, well, I've got to get uh, a different impression across. And so he says in June of this year, for the first time, he uh, announces that he has this document which will explain why he has done what he has done. The document he called his manifesto, 35,000 words of anti-technology ramblings. Ironically, you can find his complete manifesto on the internet. He writes, the Industrial Revolution and its consequences have been a disaster for the human race. They have destabilised society, have made life unfulfilling and have inflicted severe damage on the natural world. In one way or another, he blames technology for all our woes. His solution? A revolution against the industrial system to destroy existing society. Never forget, he reminds us, that the human race with technology is just like an alcoholic with a barrel of wine. Some word associations. Personal computer. Prison. Information superhighway. Uh, Roadkill. Technophobia. Common sense. Can you see any good at all that has come from the technological revolution? There is no good at all. Kirkpatrick Sale is about as close as you can get to understanding the Unabomber. In fact, what he says is in 40 to 100 years, we face the collapse of uh, our present civilization. And he sees it as his job and that of other revolutionaries to hasten this collapse because he believes that out of the ashes of uh, this will come some future society of the kind that he wants. The bomb was timed to cause maximum bloodshed just after officers opened at 9 a.m. There's no doubt the Unabomber has an enormous ego. When he was thrown off the front pages earlier this year by another mad bomber, he knew he had to take drastic action to reclaim attention. He pointed a loaded gun at America's press. A couple of weeks ago, the Washington Post, with the support of the New York Times, published all 35,000 words of the Unabomber's manifesto. They agreed to publish because the Unabomber promised that in return there'd be no more bombs. The publishers not only gave in to that ransom demand, they placed a hell of a lot of trust on the word of a murderer. Publish or, or perish, that was the Unabomber's ultimatum to the newspapers. Well, it was published or someone will perish. Amongst journalists, veteran Daniel Shaw was almost a lone voice in supporting the decision of the newspaper's publishers to give in to the Unabomber. Right or wrong? In your view? I think under the circumstances it was right. When you have to choose between principles and lives, I would choose lives. What happens the next time some lunatic comes out of the woodwork looking for his 15 minutes of fame? Well, in some ways this was a unique situation, quite singular in the sense that this was not just somebody saying that I will throw a bomb at you or kill you or kill other people unless you publish this or that. This was somebody who had proved that he could and did kill people. There is a great fear in the United States that the Unabomber isn't a man of his word, that his evil and indiscriminate attacks will continue. He is, after all, a man who delights in making bombs that are well-crafted, deadly, and impossible to trace. They're original. They're all uh, homemade. Uh, the wood is carved at home. The screws are made at home. I mean, that was quite a uh, quite an eye opener that he would be that original, or that he would build a switch rather than go purchase a switch. 
I mean, just to keep the originality, that's unique. But you have to remember, the, the Unabomber's a loner. He has nothing else to do. This is his life, building bombs. In particular, these polynomials depend only on A. John Hauser, who wanted to be an astronaut, has become a university professor and knowingly remains a target of the Unabomber. You know, it's much more important to follow our scientific curiosity, to seek to understand these different areas than, than it is to, to close everything down and be hostage to, to whatever threats could come from the outside. Do you ever ask yourself, why me? Why did this happen to me? Wrong place, wrong time. I mean, whenever I want to throw a pity party, I'll, all I have to do is look around and see how enormously uh, fortunate I have, am for the many, many things that, uh, that I'm afforded. The hard part. Every time Luddite Kirkpatrick Sale chops wood, he sees computers. He's even been known to smash the real thing. Six at last count. And uh, I hope to have many more. How does it feel? Oh, it feels wonderful. You can't imagine how satisfying it is to take something like this and watch the machine go up uh, in, in pieces. Colors, sounds, puffs. Uh, it's terribly dramatic and it feels very good inside. Have you been contacted by the FBI, given them any assistance? Well, I have been contacted. They gave me the document to read, and uh, I hope I have not been of any assistance to them. Uh, it is not my interest or my job to see this man caught. You could overlook the three people he's killed and the scores he's injured? Well, I could overlook that. I don't feel that uh, I want to wreck any particular vengeance uh, on this man. It's ludicrous to say that this man will live by his word. He can. He's a serial killer, and a, and a serial killer will kill till he's caught. Hello, I'm Nick McKenzie. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. Don't miss out on our extra minute segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.